Isn't it amazing how Michael Jordan made basketball look effortless? Isn't it amazing how Tiger Woods made making birdies and eagles look effortless? Isn't it interesting how people who win make winning look so easy and so effortless? And there doesn't seem to be any struggle whatsoever in their performance. But for the average everyday person, success, even at a much lower level than a Michael Jordan, Tiger Woods, Warren Buffett, Steve Jobs, whoever, Elon Musk, at a much lower level, it feels like the absolute ultimate struggle. So on this video today, I'm going to talk to you about why success feels so hard when it's actually very simple. And I believe, first of all, I, I discovered this when I wasn't looking for it. Um, success, it is easier to succeed than it is to fail. It's just easier on the opposite end. On the opposite end. Success and failure are both, they both have their level of difficulty. If, like, if you're going to succeed, it's hard on the front end, easier on the back end. If you're going to struggle, easy on the front end. I'm going to give you the formula for struggle. Do the easy thing now. There, there it is. There's the formula for struggle for the rest of your life. Do the easy, convenient thing right now, and you can, congratulations, you get to struggle for the rest of your life. However, if you do the hard thing first, if you get the hard stuff out of the way early, success becomes easy. See, what you don't realize is we've been programmed to buy the lie that in order for an answer to be right, it has to be hard to come by, which is why some of the hardest people in the world to coach to have success, in my opinion, are the ones who have the most so-called education, the smart people. They're so smart, they can't get out of their own way. And they, they look, they ignore the easy answers that are right in front of them and go looking for hard answers that are in the booth in the back, in the corner in the dark, under a rock that's filled with fire ants, right? Because that has to be the right answer. I'm Indiana Jones. This is my temple of doom. No, you're not Indiana Jones. And it's not your success is not in your temple of doom. It just doesn't work like that. And one of the things I, that helped me discover this, I was having, I was having a conversation with a coaching client one day and I said, how's business? That seems like a fairly simple question, right? How's business, right? They said, I'm really trying. And like when they said it, it just hit me. That's really fascinating because I'm not really trying. Like I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm not even trying at all. Like there's no sweat happening here. There's no toil. There's no hustle. There's no grind. So I wanted to make sure I wasn't confused. So I called one of my mentors, Jerry Clark. I called Jerry on the phone. I said, Jerry, can I ask you a question? Are you trying to succeed? You know what he did? He laughed. He said, <laughs> I'm not trying to succeed. What do you mean am I trying to succeed? You succeed. There's no try. And I thought, okay, so it's not just me. And then I stumbled upon a principle, a money-making principle. How many of y'all like money-making principles? Yeah? Okay, I stumbled upon a money-making principle in April of 1999. And I stumbled upon it because I accidentally made $6,200 in one week, which was a lot of money to me back then, because the year before I only made $48,000 for the whole year. But now I made $6,200 I mean, $6, in a week? I made more in a week than I would have made in a month. I was like, I wasn't even trying. But the reason that happened was because in January, I shifted my focus. I'll tell you what that is at the end of the video. I shifted my focus from what to what. I'll tell you what that is, what, what I shifted my focus from and to at the end of the video. Okay, so, so I'm there, and I accidentally make $6,200 in one week, and I know some of you have heard the story before, but I'm making this video for the people who haven't seen me yet. <laughs> um, and so um, I said, wow. Then I said it backwards. I said, wow. I said upside down and backwards. I said, Mom, wow. Okay. Um, it, and I thought, it was so easy to make that much money. And I concluded, because it was, easier, it was the easiest money I'd ever made in my life, it was the most money I'd ever made in a short period of time in my life, so I concluded, that must mean. Like, I stumbled upon a principle. Like, like you're not looking. You ever been walking down the street, and you picked up, you found a $100 bill? Has anybody ever, that ever happened to anybody else? Like, you just found a $100 bill? Yeah, it's happened to me before. It's like, it's like I wasn't looking for it, but... Since it's there, I'll look around. Is there somebody who lost it? Maybe I can get it. No, there's nobody around. I don't know what else to do with this. I guess it needs to go in my pocket. 
right? And so I wasn't looking for this principle when I found it, and the principle was this. It is easier to make a lot of money in a short period of time than it is to make a little money over a long period of time. That's why I don't ever worry about how much anything costs, ever. I don't ever price shop. I just look for what I desire to buy, and I buy that. I don't, I don't buy prices, ever. Why? Because when you buy prices, eventually, very, very often, you're going to end up with stuff you don't have any desire for whatsoever. But if you buy what you desire to have, you can enjoy it the whole time, regardless of cost. Does, does that make sense? Kind of, at least, a little. Okay. So I said, that must mean it's easier to make a lot of money in a short period of time than to make a little money over a long period of time. Now, either that's true or it's not. But I'm going to tell you what's almost as important as if it's true or not, whether or not I really believe it. Because if I don't believe it and it's true, I don't access it. And if I do believe it and it's not true, then I'm eventually going to figure that out and still my life is going to be better. So I'm going to act as if this principle is true. This was my first financial breakthrough. And you remember what Tony Robbins said. Tony Robbins said, if you want to model any form of human excellence, find somebody who's achieving the result you desire. You model three things. How many things? Three. You model their belief systems. You model their physiology, their belief system, what they believe about whatever the thing is. You model their physiology. How do they hold their, carry themselves in space? Like, what tone of voice do they use? Like, you model their physiology, their body language. And then you model their mental syntax. Syntax is the order in which we fire off messages in our brain. Most people don't realize it's not just important to fire off the right messages. You have to fire off the right messages in the right order. If you fire off the right messages in the wrong order, you're going to find yourself confused. It'd be like you're building a car and you try to start it before you put the engine in. No, you got to put the engine in first, right? You have to start at the beginning. Okay, y'all tracking. So, so I said, I'm going to believe that it's easier to make a lot of money in a short period of time than it is to make a little money over a long period of time. And if I really believe that, what am I going to do? Now, how is that going to change my behavior? Because be beliefs always affect behavior, don't they? Like, you behave the way you behave because you believe the stuff you believe. And what the problem is, you never take an inventory of your beliefs to see whether or not those beliefs are serving you or not. Can I get a witness? Right? You just believed them. Well, mama believed it. Grandma believed it. How did it work for them? My teacher believed it. Daddy believed it. Uncle, you know, Willie, he believed it. Well, okay, how did it work for them? If it didn't work for them, maybe you should adopt a different belief. Just to, hashtag, just say it. Okay, so, so now here's, what, here's the decision I made when I discovered that principle. So the discovery is followed by a decision, and here's the decision. From now on for the rest of my life, I am no longer going to look at or for the hard ways to make a little bit of money. I'm only going to look at the easy ways to make a lot. I'm only going to look for the easy ways to make a lot. I'm going to ignore everything else. I got a text message from a friend of mine a couple of weeks ago. He's like, hey, Myron, I've got this. I know you don't really look at opportunities, but I got this opportunity, and you can do this thing with these hospitals, and then you make $1.2 million every time you close a deal. So I got to go learn your thing and take time away from my thing that I know is working so I can make $1.2 million. I don't want to make $1.2 million that, much, that badly. I'm not interested. I, I really, I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't have time to care. I don't, I don't, not because $1.2 million isn't that much money. It is, it's as much as it is. But if you already have $1.2 million, or way more than that, $1.2 million is just $1.2 million, right? And so now I'm going to stop doing the things that make me more than $1.2 million a month to go look at your thing and then learn your thing and then stop doing my thing. So I'm going to lose the momentum I have to overcome inertia in your arena. Why would I do that? Oh, I would do that because I don't understand and I think money is the answer and I don't realize I'm the answer. The answer is in me but I'm looking outside of me for the answer, so I can't find it because I'm looking in the place where it's not. See, we, we forget that the real value of the assets are the people who control them. Mm, I wish I had some help in here. Oh, Lord. So how are you controlling your assets? Do you remember, what the, you remember what the prophet Elisha asked the widow in 2 Kings chapter 4? 
what hast thou in the house? What did she say? Thine handmaid hath not anything in the house save a pot of oil. I don't have anything but this. What are you but thising over? Is that a good question? Like, what do you have right now that you're but thising over? I can't do anything but this. I can write music. Okay. I think there have been some people in history who've made some money doing that. Just a possibility. I can't do anything but cook. Can't make any money cooking? Tell that to Rachel Ray. See if she believes you. Myron, what are you saying? I'm saying you are the asset, but you're only the asset when you're seeking to serve other people. Okay. I'm going to let you all in on a little secret. I have to say it the right way because I don't want you all to be mad at me. Y'all come here and you give me somebody to talk to. And you don't pay to come, but YouTube pays me because y'all come and I talk to y'all. So I hope that doesn't make you feel used. (laughs) But they pay me. Like tens of thousands of dollars a month, they pay me because I talk to you. But I'm not even doing it for the money. The money is just a side benefit. You know why I'm really doing it? So I can learn how to get good at it. So I can learn the lessons I can only learn while I'm doing the thing. Okay? And I'm not good yet. Oh, but when I get good, look at him, look at him. Because that day's going to come. And I'm going to be really, really good at YouTube eventually. I learned some stuff today. I learned some stuff about it yesterday that I have never done yet. But we just keep iterating and you just keep iterating and you add stuff to it. Okay, so so I'm only going to look at, I'm only going to look for the easier ways to make a lot of money which means I'm going to ignore everything else. That's a hard decision to make if you're addicted to a paycheck. By the way, if you have a family and your job is how you take care of them, stay addicted to your paycheck until by your actions and results you wean yourself off. Don't think that you can start doing what I do now where you are now because I didn't start doing what I do now when I was where you are now. I started doing what I did then. And I had a full-time job and a, the rest of the time opportunity. Did y'all hear what I just said? And, and, and during the day I made a living and at night I worked on designing a future. Y'all tracking. So here's why... Success feels so hard. Number one, most of the things you're attempting to do to make a living, you are attempting to make a living in the past. That's why you got people in their 40s, 50s, 60s, 70s, and 80s still going back to school to get another degree, even though the first three didn't work. No, that's not a judgment. I'm not, no, I'm not, no, I'm just making an observation. There are kids in their 20s. We're making millions of dollars a year, but you're going back to school. Do you realize by the time you learn anything in the miseducation, I mean, if you're going to go like learn how to do surgery or build bridges, please go to college and get a good degree and get good grades and pay attention and like make sure you know the math. I got to drive across that bridge, right? So I'm not saying college has no no value. It's not the ultimate value to every single solitary person. That's the point. Are you tracking? And to tell every child that they should go to college is like telling every child they they need to become a professional basketball player. It's dumb. Okay, anyway, in my opinion. So what happens is we're, we're, we're looking in the past. Why? Because by the time you graduate from college, what you'll find is you'll find yourself well equipped to make a living in a world that no longer exists, period. Like the textbooks, by the time they got written and approved, the stuff that worked in them are obsolete. So, so it's, 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 a, it's college, it, serves, it, can, it can serve a good purpose for some professions, but the rest, for everybody else, it's a racket. It's a money game. It's a money grab. Anyway, in my opinion, see what I did there? You can take everything I say and flush it down the toilet. And I'll be okay with that. I'm not easily offended. So that's one. We're trying to make a living in the past. Number two, we're looking for answers in a place they don't exist. 
And I'm going to tell you someplace they don't exist. They don't exist. Success is not the result of hustling and grinding. The only benefit of hustling and grinding is it makes you stronger. But the downside of you getting stronger in the wrong arena is that by the time you find an answer, you don't have any strength left. Things in nature don't grow by hustling and grinding. Things in nature grow by ebbing and flowing. Am I telling the truth? So the stuff that you were made to do is only hard until you become the person who can do it. So the hard work is in becoming the person, not in doing the thing. Work hard at becoming a person who doesn't have to work hard to do the thing. Well, I never said that before. Somebody write it down and text it to me. <laughs> right? And so we're looking, for the, we're looking for answers in the wrong place. We're trying to make a living in the past. And we resist right answers because of where we got the wrong answers from. What does that mean? My grandmama told me, yo, grandmama was wrong. She was doing her best to, I, 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 staying alive, staying alive. Like she was doing her best to stay alive and keep you alive. She did the best she could with what she knew. But what worked for grandmama ain't going to work for you. Unless grandmama's like making it work, then that's a different story. Yeah, but my daddy told me, okay, but how's daddy doing? Stop following people who are lost, lest when y'all fall in a ditch, there be nobody around to lift you out. Another reason success feels hard is because the best answers seem too good to be true. I'm going to tell you something. If, like, I didn't even, <laughs> y'all understand. I was on YouTube for 14 years before I knew they paid people for videos. I was on the platform, had videos, had tens of thousands of views and thousands and thousands of watch time hours, maybe tens of thousands of watch time hours, had no idea that YouTube would pay me. Okay, so Matt, wrap your mind around. This is what I mean. This seems too good to be true. I moved to Tampa. January 2nd, 2013, from, Harris, from Mechanicsburg, Pennsylvania. I'm, I sold my million-dollar house for $635,000 on a short sale. I was broke as a joke and ready to choke. I borrowed money from my brother, my brother-in-law, some friends of mine, and anybody who would loan it to me so I'd have enough money to, move, to pay for the truck to move my stuff to Tampa and have enough money to rent a house when I got here because my credit was too bad to buy one. I moved to Tampa in January 2013, but I need to do something. I need, like, I need to be involved in some kind of ministry. I'm like, I am not used to not serving people. So I started a Bible study at IHOP on Bears Avenue in 275 with my friend, Dr. Delatoro McNeil. We started this Bible study, and we just, I showed up every Wednesday morning at 7 a.m., which means I had to get up at 5.30 because I had to do Tampa traffic, get to IHOP, do this Bible study for entrepreneurs we'd have anywhere from six people to 19 people show up. I did it there for probably seven years every Wednesday when I was in town. Nobody was paying me. I wasn't taking up any offerings. I was just doing it because I needed to serve people. And then let fewer and fewer people started showing up. I said, well, let me just broadcast in Facebook while I'm here. Because at first when I did it, I did it on a conference call line while I was there. I'd call into my conference call line. People would jump on the conference call, so maybe 30 people on the conference call, 15 people or whatever, 10 people, 8 people at IHOP. Did it on my conference call. Well, why am I doing this conference call? Why don't I do it in a Facebook group? Did it in a Facebook group. Facebook group, I think, now has like 25,000 people, and it's called Bible Success Secrets Facebook group. Anybody can join it. I literally have hundreds of videos in there, me teaching business principles from the Bible, hundreds of videos. And then I did that from 2017 on Facebook to 2021. What was that? Four years every week. Then eventually I stopped going to IHOP. I'm like, why am I getting up early and going to this traffic? I just wake up at 6 o'clock instead of 5.30 and be downstairs and do Bible study at 7 o'clock on, on Facebook. Then I thought, 
I'm not doing it before everybody goes to work anymore. Why am I doing it at 7 o'clock? Why don't I just move it to 10 o'clock? So I moved it to 10 o'clock. I was doing it on Facebook. Four years. And then I learned that YouTube will pay you for putting videos on their platform. Well, I was already doing the Bible study anyway. I was already recording it anyway. All I had to do was put it on a different platform. Uh, let me think about it. Okay, maybe they'll send me some money. The first month I started doing it. Now, when we turned on monetization the first month, they paid me like $305. And I had not done a new video since July of the previous year. We turned it in February. I had not put up a new video since July of the previous year. And I turned on monetization. Well, actually, Zach turned it on. Somebody on my team turned it on. $305. He comes to me and says, we made $305 last month. I said, for what? He said, for the videos you have on YouTube. I was confused. I didn't know what that meant. But OK, let's. Cool. Right? And then he comes to me next month. We made $353 last month. What are you talking about, bro? Well, they're paying you for the videos you have when you turn on monetization. Okay, cool. So that was March. April, oh, we're going to start doing a video every week. I'm going to do a video every week for 10 years. I don't care if they pay me or not. I'm going to get good at this thing. I'm going to do a video every week, one video a week for 10. And to me, I want you to wrap your mind around what I'm about to say. One video a week seemed like a lot to me in February of 2022 when we started doing this. Like, how am I going to do a whole long-form video every week? Oh, I'm just going to do Bible study. Let's do my Bible study. Well, the first month they paid me like $1,457. Wait, what? Oh, let's do two videos a week. <laughs> the next month, it went to $2,700. Wait, what? The next month, it went to $15,000. The next month, it went to $27,000. The next month, it went to 44. Like, what is, what is going on? Why am I telling you this story? It seemed too good to be true. There's, wait, wait. I'm going to do this anyway? No, 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 no. I'm going to do it anyway. No, NT way. And y'all going to send me? Child, please. If you think I ain't fixing to do this and let y'all send me free money for doing what I'm going to do anyway, you got me confused with Byron Silver. I am not confused. Then we started doing three videos a week, and we found out that that was too many. We got more views when we only did two. But then we started doing shorts on the days we weren't doing long form. And now it's turned into a thing. We got a whole system around it. Wow. Isn't that amazing? But it seems too good to be true. Like... Making $142,000 in the market yesterday seems too good to be true. I got a friend. He has a goal to make a million dollars every day in the market. He doesn't make a million dollars every day. Like yesterday, only made $788,000. Yeah, I know. I don't know how he's going to make it. The, the day before that, he only made, the day before that, he made $1.9 million. That's probably how he's going to make it. And some days he loses money, just like anybody else who's in the market. Some days, some days you win, some days you lose, some days you get rained out. But, but here's what I'm saying. All of the stuff that works really, really well sounds too good to be true. If somebody tells you, if you're getting ready to head in a direction that can make your life better, and somebody who's not doing better than you, but they're either concerned about you or concerned about you getting ahead of them, they warn you, that sounds too good to be true. Here's what you do. You smile. And you say, thank you for sharing. Thank you for caring. And then go disregard everything they said. Why, what am I listening to you for? I don't want, you ain't got nothing I want. Why wouldn't I listen to somebody who's achieving an, an objective I would like to achieve? Here's what I'm going to tell you. Success feels hard mostly because you think it's supposed to. Why do you think it's supposed to? Because failure is so hard. Well, if failure is this hard, success has to be harder. I submit to you that not only is it not harder, it's actually easier. I worked way more when I was making 30000 a year than I make now. And I only ever had one year. I only ever had one year in my life where I made $30,000 in a year at a job. Everything else I ever made at every other job I've ever had was way less than that. Like way less, like crazy way less. But it seems like, I mean, like if we don't, like, 
I'm, I'm telling you this because making 30000 a month is not 10 times harder or 12 times harder than making 30000 a year. It's 12 times easier. But if you don't believe that, then you're going to miss all of the cues and all of the clues that can help you do that. Does that make sense? Because you'll, you'll have a scotoma. You'll be blind to them. Well, that can't be true. Well, that can't be true. Well, that can't be true. It can't be that. But it actually is that. Does that make sense? So let's do this. Let's, let's stop buying the lie that the struggle is real. Because it costs too much. Let's stop attempting to prove to other people how much we deserve success because we keep doing things the hard way. Because at the end of the day, at the end of the day, it ain't that deep. So let's stop looking at all the hard ways. Or, okay, let's say you got to keep looking at some of the hard ways. But don't look at any new hard ways to make a little bit of money. From now on, everything you do, look at the easy ways to make a lot. Just do a test. I'm going to tell you, so I'm, I'm going to end with this. Because now, like right now, I'm, you know, I do my thing, and I've got like a million-dollar coaching program, and we've got three people in that coaching program right now, and it maxes out at five people, and I'm sure it'll max out before the end of the month, or at least it seems like it will, right? So it's a million-dollar coaching program. I remember when I made my first premium value offer. It felt so hard to me. It felt like such a struggle. And I decided I'm going to sell this course, this training. It's going to be a two-day event. I'm going to teach people how to sell from stage. I'm going to charge them so much money, nobody's going to buy it. Like, literally, that was my objective. I want to charge them so much money, nobody's going to buy it. Now, before I tell you how much I was going to charge them, let me ask you all a question. How many, of you have ever, how many of you have ever decided, I'm going to make an offer with a price so high, nobody's going to say yes? How many of you have ever done that? Now, keep your hands up. Keep your hands up. I want you to look around the room. There are four people in this room that have decided to make offers with a price that felt so high that nobody would say yes. Okay. And if anybody, any of you who have your hands raised, would you like to share what your best month ever was? Anybody? Do you want to share? Yeah, Ruben, talk to me. 1.3 what? 1.3 million was your best month. What about you, sir? 40,000 in two weeks. Okay. You want to share too, Donna? Yeah. 23,000 in one week. Be like, it start. it doesn't, see, here's, what, here's my point. It didn't make sense. So I said, I'm going to sell this thing for $3,000. I had to say it fast before I changed my mind. And you know what happened? Two people said yes. I'm like, what did it just happen? Oh, the price was too low. <laughs> I'm serious. The next time I offer it, $4,000. Seven people bought it. When you raise the price, more people buy? What is this alternative universe that I've never been a part of? But you know what felt harder than the $3,000 offer? The very first offer I ever made when I was selling from stage it was a $147 offer. And before I made the offer that morning, I called my wife, I called my brothers, I called anybody who knew how to pray and said, pray for me. I've got to make some sales today. I spent all this money coming here. I've got to make some sales today. Pray for me. And man, if I'd have made $1,000, I'd have been ecstatic. But I made $147 offer, 135 people in the room. I made $5,900. And two people invited me within the next two weeks to come speak at an event in their town. I'm like, shut up. The $147,000 offer was harder than the $3,000 offer, and the $3,000 offer was harder than the $4,000, and the $4,000 was way harder than my $350,000 VIP day that I offer right now, and the $350,000 VIP day was harder than to make than the million-dollar offer. Like, you have to stretch. I'm not saying go make somebody a million dollar offer. I'm saying come up with a price that to you, like for something value that you can provide for somebody, come up with a price that to you seems ridiculous. Nobody's going to pay me this amount. And make the offer. If you don't make the offer, the answer is already no. You increase the possibility of a yes by infinity just by making the offer. Wow. 
I mean, wouldn't you like to increase your chances infinitely of success? Make the offer. Anyway, that, I believe that's why success feels hard. The other reason, and this is the last one, is because people who are really hyper-successful spend 10 times as much time preparing as they do performing. And people who struggle spend 10 times as much time performing as they do preparing. If you'll, flip it, if you'll flip the script and take your performance time and turn it into preparation time, see, what'll happen success will feel easy. See, y'all think Myron turned on YouTube and he became successful overnight. No. Myron's been speaking in public since he was 17. And he started, record, he started doing his Bible study live 10, not 10 years, eight years before he started putting them on YouTube. I had eight years of practice. I learned how to have something good to say. I learned how to say it well. I learned how to say it often. And I learned how to say it in front of a camera. And if I didn't do anything else, like I could literally, literally, now, my business couldn't run off of this, but I could live off of the money YouTube pays me easily. It's, and it's just extra. I could live off the money that YouTube pays me. So hopefully that helps. And stop doing stuff the hard way because it makes you feel smarter. It makes you feel more worthy. It's just going to make you more tired. And then by the time the real answer comes, you'll be so exhausted, you won't have enough energy to even attempt it. So I said I was going to share something with you at the end of the video but I don't even remember what it was. No. What was it? Uh, when I was talking about what, though? When I shifted my focus from... Oh, that's what it was. When I discovered that it's easier to make a lot of money than it was to make a little bit, I sh the reason that happened was because in January, I shifted my focus. What I shifted my focus on. So my whole life, my focus was, I need to make money so I can pay the bills because I was poor. Then by the time... I got to that place, space in 1999. I was middle class. I'm making 48,000 a year in 1998, which was middle class back then. And at $48,000, my focus was maintaining good credit. But I shifted my focus from paying money for the purpose of paying bills and money for the purpose of maintaining good credit to money for the purpose of turning it into more money by investing it into assets. And so I created assets that paid me. Here's the interesting thing about assets. They're not like a job. Assets, when you're creating them and building them and developing them, they actually cost you money. They don't make you money. And that's why most people have no assets. Because assets go down they cause your bank account to go down before it goes up. But it only goes down for a little while. But it can go up for the rest of your life. It cost me tens of thousands of dollars to publish these books because they're self-published. To publish these books and then to get them printed. But I only, I only published them once. I only, wrote, I only had the cover designed once. I only had it formatted once. I only had it edited once. This book makes me between fifty and 60000 a month. Why? I'm not telling you that to brag. I'm just telling you, like, it cost me money before it made me money. But you know where I invested first to become an author? I am, the month before I wrote my book, I invested $18,000 into learning how to become a best-selling author. $18,000 is what I invested in me because I'm the asset to learn how to become a best-selling author. So when I wrote a book, I didn't have to just, they didn't have to take up space in my garage. I would rather they take up space on somebody else's bookshelf. All right, that's why success feels hard. So stop doing that and start doing this. Thanks for watching.